are continuing our segment on women's empowerment. And today in the studio, we have Mona Aurora. She's got this fantastic book called Motivated, so we're excited to talk to her now. Mona Aurora, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for having me. So this is very cute, Motivated. <laughs> it's like motivated. Yep. <laughs> so it says journey of an Indo-Canadian woman. So tell me about your journey. <laughs> tell me, first of all, what you do okay. career-wise, and uh -huh. then we'll go backwards to find out what inspired you to bring you to this point. Absolutely. Well, I am a, I would say, successful <laughs> realtor. Yes. I actually specialize in downsizing, condos and townhouses. So my brand is called Strata Queens. Okay. So I focus mainly on people that are wanting to get into their first home, maybe the condo with the current market. That's what you can get into is the condos, townhouses, and mainly because it's a very complex dealing that you do with real estate when it comes to strata because there's so much moving pieces in strata that you need to know and I feel that I love educating people in that aspect. So okay, that's so you why. find it rewarding. So yeah. in addition to, of course, your successful career as a realtor, <laughs> uh, you're an author. Yes, so I am. <laughs> you wrote this book. What motivated you to write this book? Um, Actually, I went through my darkest times and um, I picked up my life from ground up. I remember I literally had $5 in my pocket, my son, my dog, and one suitcase. And I didn't know that night where I was going to go. Oh. I went into transition home, okay. <laughs> looked at it, and I was like, there's no way in the world. I mean, all power to the women that are living there. Honestly, I have a high respect for them. And okay. that is the reason why when I saw it, I was like, there's no way in the world I'm putting my son in here. How old was and your son? At that time, he was about just uh, nine years old. Okay. I've been single mom ever since he was eight years old. Okay. So I, I went to the transition home, looked at it, I was like, no. So it's really, I didn't have anybody. I had my family around me, but one thing I knew in that moment, my family would, without any doubt, would have supported me. However, if I had something to lean on, I could have never found my strength. So I knew that I had to make this work on my own. Right. And that whole idea of Mona Wade, it came at the point, it didn't come right away. I mean, I started living my life, doing side jobs. But one thing I knew, because I was a realtor before too, and I'd taken some time off, okay. one thing I knew I was going to get back into business. So I was like, okay, I need to save up enough money. Being as a realtor, you know, there's two, three months goes by and you may not have an income. True. So I needed to have some money put aside so I can quit my jobs. I started doing odd jobs. I worked as a store manager with Starbucks, Staples and all that. Right. But I knew I was, that was a temporary. I remember at Starbucks one morning, five in the morning, it's snowing and I'm picking up the patio chairs to put the patio together. And I kept telling myself over and over, this is just a journey. It's not a destination. This is just oh. a journey. It's not a destination. Yeah. And, and that's the whole idea came is that the life is just a journey. You never arrive. It's, it's a continuous, you go through the bumps. You could be so successful, have everything put together and it's still a journey and you can hit the bump. Right. And that's when I realized that, you know what, nothing, nothing can motivate, motivate you in the world but you. Right. And that's when the whole idea came that how do you find your inner motivation to do the things that you want to do in your life. Right. And for you to be at Starbucks and telling yourself, you know what, it's okay, just hang in there, Mona, just hang in there. <laughs> just hang like, in there. That's amazing. You know, and yeah. then having your son being so little and doing what you need to do to make ends meet for him. Yeah. yeah. So in a way, he's your motivation. To oh my God. Going he is, I could have not done without him. I always tell people he is my true pillar. And one thing I'm very, very blessed and fortunate that He's got a good uh, head on his shoulder because one thing as a teenager mom, as he was going through his teenager's age, yeah. I didn't have to worry where he is, what he's up to. And I remember there was a year in between where I started pull, almost started pulling my hair because he became a little bit rebellious in that one oh, year. And okay. I couldn't figure, it wasn't even a year, I would say it was maybe three to four months of a rebellious. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, this is not who I raised. So what happened here? Yeah. He, he's never been late for school. He would never miss school, but he was doing all of that. And I was like, what's going on here, right? right? I tried talking to him. He wanted to change schools. And I'm like, that's not my son. We don't run away. Like I've never taught my son to run away from situation. Right. So I remember he was going through his emotions. I'm listening to him and I'm trying my best. And I'm like, did, did I fail somewhere? Right. And I remember we went to see the school in, in Fleetwood and we came out and we sat in the car and then I sat in the car with him and I said, I want you to know something, Boris. I said, I don't know what's going on in your life because you're not sharing with me. Yeah. But one thing I will say, whatever reason you're running away from your school, it'll follow you everywhere. Right. Because it's not the school. It's something that needs to shift here. You so I said, you, can, I, you need to face it. I said, I don't know what's going on because you're not sharing. And I don't know why you're not sharing because I have given you that permission of a relationship we share. Right. 
he didn't share but then he came to me a week later and he goes i want to stay in that school i'm like okay okay so he went through for two years he yeah. finished his high school and everything and then he went into the university and then he, he also has a real estate license with me so he helped okay. me with my business too Good. so then one one day he finally d decided to share with me he said do you want me to share what happened i was like yeah and he goes what happened was and please um I, i'm just gonna share it if you need to edit it you can yeah but this is after two years he hadn't told you now he told you he, he okay. told me just after two years of finishing school right he told me and he goes mom what has happened is that some of my friends closest friends were getting into the drugs and all that kind of stuff okay and he chose not to be part of that so he felt he was losing his friends he felt oh. he was he was like lost soul because he had no friends and he didn't want to go to school he didn't want to like he didn't want to do anything to do right. with the school so he thought the only way to get out of the situation is to change the schools because he said i feel so isolated right. if i was not smoking i'm not cool anymore for them if i'm not doing drugs i'm right. not cool for them anymore and i just felt that i was losing all my friends and everything so i didn't know how and i didn't want to bother you oh my goodness. because you had so much going on in your life if so, you are making things work that's and a true testament to you as a mother because you think oh my son's going through something terrible but he's actually trying to get away from something terrible true. so what a great uh you know the fact that he's thinking that way mm -hmm. you've done a good job obviously <sighs> and so, so and that's when he said he's like when you talked to me in in that car and you gave me that no matter where i go it's going to follow that's when i realized that i have true. to come around which i have to come true. around and he said that's when i made it okay and all of a sudden the funny thing is even though he shared that two years later but a week after when i saw the results it was all of a sudden he's getting up on time he's going to school on time yeah. he's getting his grades up everything shifted and i'm like okay oh, but that's, that's because he realized that no i can run yeah. away from it or i have to make it work where i am yeah. and still be okay if i don't have friends right yeah. and uh, you were saying we were off camera when you told me that he just got accepted <laughs> oh to my UBC. god <laughs> ah, look at the joy that you have that's amazing so that tell me about is, that um, <laughs> so, so my son i have seen him from last i would say many months that he's been studying till 3 o'clock in the morning 4 o'clock in the morning my family to the point is like we don't get to see our nephew or we don't get to see him every occasion every event every party he's saying no to and i've been respecting that because i know he's been trying so hard not trying was trying so hard to get to ubc right so the funny thing is I believe in law of attraction. Like yes. mine and my son's life is a direct result of is what we think, what we become, right? Okay. So the funny thing is, so he, he applied for SFU and he applied at UBC, both of them. He's going to KPU right now. Okay. And he got accepted at SFU with the scholarship. Yeah. So he came up to me and he goes, mom, I got accepted at SFU. But the, for some reason, even though it was like, oh my God. And the joy, I could feel that he was like, no, I'm still waiting for that. Right. Uh, yeah. So there was a deadline. There was a deadline for, for you to accept their offer and pay the fees, right? Like the deposit. It was uh, almost like but four o'clock in the after in the evening. This was about a week ago. And I'm like, Paris, have you paid it? And he goes, mom. I'm going to wait till the last minute because he said, I know I'm going to get into UBC. I work right. so hard. I work so hard. I'm like, and every time when he said, if I get into UBC, because he's thinking of moving out, which he is now, right? Yeah. To the, to the dorm and everything. Yeah. So sometimes he would say, if I'm like, Paris is like, sorry, when I get into when, UBC, right? Yeah. Mindset. Right. The mindset. Yes. So I remember a week ago, I left home to go and get my appointments done and I'm driving and he calls me. This was literally 15 minutes to five. This was almost 15 minutes away from the deadline of accepting <laughs> SFU. Right. Yeah. 15 minutes before the deadline, he calls me and he goes, mom and we speak hindi because i had my son yeah, you I, can say I've it taken, in hindi i've taken understand. i've taken yeah. my son to india for two years to have him study there okay. so we speak in hindi so he calls me and he goes Sorry. that's okay <laughs> when you're ready you can you can say it and our and viewers speak hindi punjabi we speak lots of different languages okay. here so you can so he picked I, I picked up the phone and he goes mom ho gaya and he is crying oh. and I'm shaking while I'm driving my hands are shaking my legs are shaking so I literally I'm on number 10 highway and going towards 152 so mm. I literally took a turn towards another <laughs> side and I pulled over because I'm like I, I it's not safe for me to drive this right. way right oh. we both are bawling out we both are bawling out and he's like mom this was just 10 minutes left for me to accept the SFU and he goes I don't have to accept that anymore oh. I'm gonna get into like I, I'm in UBC and the first yeah. thing the <laughs> first thing I said to him I said Paris thank you and he goes what are you thanking me for I said Paris today you have given me the gift that I think I, I'm the most proudest woman in the world right now because I said all the hard work 
So there was a time when I was saving the money yeah. to go for, for me to leave the job so I can get into business. Yeah. I fed this kid for one month, nothing but instant noodles. Okay. Yeah, you went through some tough times to get to where you are now, which is amazing. Because I was saving money. Yeah, of so course. So the kid is happy, instant noodles every single day. Which kid doesn't like yeah. it? A nine-year-old would have the instant noodles every day. But right? as a mother, you're going, okay, here's your noodles, but I wish I could feed you better foods because you know. Yeah. But he and I remember this is the same kid when he, I was working at Starbucks, so sometimes I wouldn't come home till two. I would have to leave at four in the morning. So he would dress him himself. Walk the dog, feed the dog, yeah. feed himself, go to school, lock the door, come back. Yeah. So having, he's seen all of that. So I remember one morning, one night I came home at two o'clock in the morning and I'm looking at him and like, what kind of a life is this that I don't even get to put my son to, my son to bed? Right. But I knew it was temporary journey, right? I knew That's this was right. just a journey, yeah. not a destination. Just a journey. And he got up and this nine-year-old held my hand and said to me, goes, mom, if you have done it once, you know, you can do it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him in that moment, I told him, I said, Paris, you don't even know the gift you have given me right now. Because yeah. I said, all that hard work that I've gone through yeah. while I was busy making ends meet, while I'm busy doing the business, while I'm doing this, 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 you just brought that all together in a gift box right. and gave me the gift and said, mom, while you were busy doing all of this, yes. I was busy with my vision. And here it is. I'm getting yes. into UBC. Oh. And, and you just paid off all my hard work. You yeah. just paid off my all hard my work. <laughs> what a what a long journey it's been to oh get to this God. point. And the things you've seen along the way. Yeah. I mean, you know, when he was eight or nine years old, having to make the decision of okay, I'm going to do this on yeah. my own. Yeah. Like that's amazing. And now he's going to be going to UBC. The funny thing is, just on the Sunday we were sitting down and we we're talking finances and everything. Of course, getting into UBC is it's not that it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's expensive. It is. So we were sitting down. We were going through expenses, the financials, the dorm prices, and everything. And he looked at at me and he goes, "Mom," because he's he knows that my life is nothing but about him. Yeah. It's, it has revolved around him, right? right? So he said to me, and he goes, so what are you going to do? I'm like, what are you, you going to do? I said, I'm going to get even more busy. I'm like, I'm going to do more business. I'm going to do this. I'm going to yeah. do this. And he goes, mom, there's a difference being busy and being lonely. He said, I don't want you to be lonely, okay? Because he said, I'm going to go. I'm going to have friends. I'm going to have a university life. I'm worried about you. He's so thoughtful. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> So I said, don't worry about me. I, I know how to keep myself busy in a way that it, because one thing that I always wanted to do is I start, I want, I, I do motivational seminars in India. So I travel every year, once in two years, and I go and do my seminars. Tell there. me about that. <laughs> you're motivating other women in India? I, I do. I, not only women, men and women both. So I have a seminar company, which okay. I run in India. And yeah. so every two years I go into seminars there. So my, my goal, my wish and my dream had always been to bring that to Vancouver. Okay. And now that he's going to university, I feel that... Uh, yeah. Because he had been my priority, no matter what I've gone, I've given so many opportunities and I turned them down because I was like, no, he's my priority. Right. And now that he's moving on, I was like, okay, now I can do the things that I wanted to do. I want to run the seminar company here and motivate other, and it's not motivate because again, nobody can motivate you. So mine is a very experiential class that I run where you actually get to go to your subconscious and figure it out where what's holding you back almost like a mass life coaching it is oh, yes like. yes okay. yes but it's where you find your own answers within rather than so i'm just withdrawing what's already in there right. rather than pushing it in you uh, so, yeah. is that in hindi in uh, it's chances are probably going to be in english but i haven't decided in yet. india no over here in i'm going to start language. oh in hindi english in English. In English. In India. Yeah. Okay. There will be a times when I'm like, there are times when I'm talking, I will say some Hindi words in there, but yes. over there people, and that's one thing I found it very interesting. People are, we are going through very shifting times with the new age and whatnot that people know that if anything, something has to shift here rather yeah. than doing this. Yes. The, when people are awakening to that, the ones yes. that are, yeah. they know that the shift is always in here. Right. Because we can only control ourselves and we can't yeah. control any outside Absolutely. forces. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, so that's amazing that you're doing that in India and now going to bring that now here. Now I'm going to bring it here. And you have the time now. Now saying. I have the time. Now yeah. I have the time. But this part of me is like, I just want to move into RV and stay in RV now. Yeah. I just want to experience life. Like, I want to explore. I just want to explore life now because I'm right. like, I've done what I needed to do. Yeah. And some people would think at the age that I am at right now, my son is all grown up, is that, oh my God, my life almost ended. I, I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I tell the woman that listens to me, I'm like, my life just started. Right. I yeah. literally say my life just started. Life ends when you stop living. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And you seem like the type of person that's got lots of energy and, oh and lots God. of ideas, right? <laughs> yeah. So yes. when you were little, when you were just a small <laughs> child, uh, your parents, did they influence you? Who was it that gave you that strength? Because you've got that, ten the, I want to say... Um, that tenacious nature. Mm -hmm. I I think it's not so much what they gave. Like I I have a great respect for my parents for sure. But I think it's the experiences that brought me where I am today. My mom passed away when I was very young. My mom had an arthritis when I was only two years or three years old. So imagine telling a two, three year old that you cannot hug your mother because she's in pain. So even oh. if I was to touch my mom, it would hurt her. So I couldn't really hug her much. Oh my goodness. And I was only 15 when she passed away. Okay. It's been 31 years that she's been gone. But one thing I do know, I was a premature baby by two months. And oh, I remember okay. doctors had given up a complete hope on me. And my mom was the only one in my entire family and said, no way in the world. I'm letting my daughter go because just because the doctors lost hope. Yeah. So they literally gave me to my mom and said, there's nothing we can do. There was no incubators back then, nothing, right? Oh my goodness. So my mom brought me home and she bought a bag of a cotton ball and she would wrap me in it and she would put me in front of the Angit pea yeah. so that I can get that warmth Warm. through that. And that's what really kept me going, I guess. Oh and goodness. so I had been in my... <laughs> My sisters called me the cat and like had that nine lives, right? Because I literally <laughs> was pronounced dead six to seven times up until I was about seven years old with an accident. I had a car accident. I fell off the roof. I, there's so much thing. I have got a big burn mark here. Oh so there were so many times that it was literally doctors were like, that's it. She's gone. And mama was like, no, no, no. So anyways, after six, seven or eight years old, I think I've lived all those nine cats lives. Yeah. So I always say that my mom works so hard with her vision. There's, there's nothing that can happen to my daughter. I cannot let that life go to waste. There's Amazing. no way in the world I can let that life to go to waste. So my mom passed away when I was 15, but from 15 till now, it's been, what, 31 years now? Yeah. I don't even remember one day that would have gone by when I don't, like I open my eyes and the first thing I see is my mom's picture and I tell her that I love her and I miss her. Oh, she has wow. really been my guiding force. I meditate a lot okay. and this may sound woo woo, yeah. but I connect with my mother in my meditation and she guides me the way she, sometimes she connects me with people. You need to search up this person and I do and there's a person with that name. So I, I have that connection with her. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people can judge and say, well, that doesn't sound like it. it's not scientific. Yeah. But if you feel it and it drives you, I mean, mm -hmm. you're the product of a very um, spiritual guidance yeah. somehow. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's obviously it's beneficial to you. It, it is definitely. And that's why I say that loved ones are never too far. Whenever you need them, they're always there supporting you, right? So yeah. I, I believe in truly that. So my book has actually been dedicated to my mother. Amazing. There's a little poem that I wrote for her in the book, and of course, uh, there's a picture of her as well. And um, I, and I think that's the reason why I'm very attached to my son, and I wanted to dedicate my whole life to him until he was well taken care of and moving on with his life. Yeah. Because I missed out on that, and I was like, I'm not like uh, my mom did the best she could, and of course, it was not in her hands. I mean, who mother wants to leave their daughters? And we have three siblings, yeah. three daughters. So who wants to leave their daughters behind like that? Right? Yeah. Nobody does. So I was like, I, I want to be there for my son. I got judged quite a few times from, from by people that you're like, like I remember there's one year I didn't work at all because I had just gone through separation yeah. and I didn't want my son to feel that dad is out of the picture and mom is also busy. So I literally didn't work for one year. I didn't take any EI, I didn't go to welfare. I literally ran the meditation sessions from my home right. to make enough. If people would pay donations and that's all I ran my house based right. on is by donations. If you donate, great. If not, then that's fine. But whole behold, I, I'm a firm believer of Ganesha as well. Somehow okay. things started to work in that one year. And when yeah. my son was getting into high school, then I was like, okay, I couldn't go back to work. Right. So yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a pleasure talking to you because there's a lot of our viewers that mm -hmm. are watching this and seeing, you know, how beautiful and well put together you look and <sighs> you sound. Mm. And that's a far cry from, you know, just the noodles and just very mm -hmm. small, like hardly any money and just 
you know, going through possibly the ministry or, you know, the shelters and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And what a far cry from that, that mm -hmm. you've become so successful. So whether you know it or not, there are viewers that are watching this right now that are going through a similar situation mm -hmm. who have a little boy at home, right? And they're drawing from you a sense of strength. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm going to get choked up too because it's, it's a beautiful story. I'm yeah. really, I'm very, very happy for you that things are turning out and will continue to turn out the best for you. So yeah. I'm grateful that you came on the show today because your journey, I mean, our viewers can read more about it. Um, <laughs> but you do have a message for our viewers. You can talk yeah. about whatever you like. You can just look at that camera over there and let them know your message. Well, one thing I always wanted to say is that when, she's, when, when you're saying that you may have a little boy at home, sometimes as a woman, and, and, I, I, and I'm going to talk something that goes off, I don't know how it's going to be portrayed, but I'm going to say it anyway. Some of you might be fighting for your money with your axes, or some of you may be making the life of hell of somebody just because you want to take care of your kids and you're counting on that money. And all I'm going to say is that you have everything within you. If that shows up, if that money, that support shows up, that's fantastic. That's above and beyond of a gravy that you could have. But just because of that, do not put your life on hold. Life is so precious. But one thing I will say as a mother, you are the role model for your child. And once you leave this planet, you want to make sure they are well taken care of on their own. And the only way you know that is because of this scene, you walk the talk. There's a little friend note that I have on the fridge and it says, don't do what mom says, do what moms do. And I think that's, that, that, that's what you want your kids to know, that they will follow you because they see in you. And uh, find your own motivation. And one thing I will say, <laughs> Don't give up. You'll be surprised if you're going through the hardest time. This is what I tell. If you're going through the hardest, hardest, hardest times right now, the darkest times, celebrate. Because God has such a big plan for you. The God will not put you on this journey with the hardships that you're going through if it didn't have a plan for you. It, he does have a plan for you. Stay, stay in there. Hang tight. There's a beautiful world waiting for you. Beautiful world waiting for you. That was a wonderful message. Everybody can benefit from that. Um, and what I want to take away from this is what you've said is what we think we, we become. become. And that's very powerful because yeah. a lot of times we get wrapped up in negativity. So it's been a pleasure. I feel motivated. I feel motivated. Motivated. <laughs> motivated. So thank you so much for no, being Thank you so much for having today. me. Thank and you. thank you. <laughs> So that was today's show for Women's Empowerment. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, be sure to get this book, Motivated by Mona Aurora. We'll see you next time.